If you are a Power Apps maker, learning how to edit a .ms app file will open the door to tips and tools that will save you a lot of time developing apps. Hey guys, my name is Michael, and in today's video, we're gonna talk all things .ms app file. So uh, the reason I'm making this video is because a lot of you have been enjoying the theme template that we put out a little while ago, and so I wanted to really dive deep into how we actually did that. So in this video, we're gonna cover what is an MS app file, um, what's inside of it, how do you actually edit it, which is a little bit more tricky than you'd imagine. I'll show you a demo of how I actually modify values within it that show up uh, to kind of use as a theme template. Um, but I'm also gonna give you some amazing ideas for some other things that I found that will also save you a ton of time in your development. If you like this video, please be sure to like and subscribe below, and we are hoping to put out a lot of other great content like this video. Before we dive into what an MS app file is, let's talk about requirements really quick for editing one. So first and foremost, you need Power Apps, which I'm guessing you have if you're watching this video. It comes with most Microsoft 365 subscriptions. Um, and sadly, if you're a Mac person, this process will not work for you. I'm a Mac person, it makes me very sad, uh, but it's a Windows only thing. So on my Mac computer, I have a Windows virtual machine. So if you're Mac, super sorry, uh, but it's a Windows only thing. So first of all, let's talk about actually what's in a .ms app file in case you've never um, gone into one before. So here we are in the Windows virtual machine and over here on this side, um, I've got a .ms app file that I've extracted into a folder so we can see what's inside of it. Basically, a .ms app file is a zip. So we'll talk about that more later. Um, so there's lots of stuff in here. I'm not gonna point out everything, but I wanna point out a few things that'll be relevant to this video and that I think are particularly cool. So first of all, um, we've got components. So if you use any components within your apps, all the code for them, everything that sets all of their properties are here within this folder. So this app only uses one component, which is why we see one there. Um, controls, so every single control that you use in your app is here. These files are separated by screens. So um, each one will be a screen with all of the controls within that screen including every property that you set within Power Apps is here in JSON format. Uh, let's go into references. Uh, so data sources is a particularly cool file. All of the data sources that you use within your app, um, for example, a SharePoint uh, site or lists, any of those things are gonna be within this file. Um, and the one that uh, we have worked on so hard is themes.json, which is what we've used for our theme template. And you can basically think about it that this JSON file tells new controls what their default properties should be. So it doesn't change previous controls within your app, but any future controls you add, you can set defaults to variables. I'll actually, that's, that'll be the theme of the demo. Um, and then lastly, I want to show you this properties.json. This has a lot of information about the app itself, um, which will, I'll talk about later. All right, um, and the other thing I will say is all of these are in JSON format, which if you've never seen before, um, it's actually a really nice, easy to read format. Uh, this is an example of. So within any of these files, you know, you'll see these uh, keys and then their values, um, sometimes in arrays and sometimes as objects. So very easy to read and manipulate. All right, let's talk about how to actually edit a .ms app file without throwing an error. And this is the key. So as of two years ago, apparently uh, this was super easy. Um, this was back when the .ms app file structure was a little different and included a file called entities.json. If you find some articles and forums on the web that mention entities, this is an old thing. Um, but at that time, it was very easy to get into this. So you would download the file, extract it with like 7-zip or another tool like that, edit your file, uh, compress it with 7-zip, and you could open it in Power Apps. No problem, very easy. Uh, a couple years ago, they took out entities.json, so that kind of, that didn't work anymore. Everything was fine until you tried to actually open it in Power Apps, wouldn't let you. Um, some people since then have tried to do a workaround where you don't actually extract the file. You just open it in 7-zip, but you don't extract it, and then 
you would like drag the file out to make some changes, drag it into replace. And apparently some people had luck with that. I, in the trying it the last couple months, did not work for me. Got the same error message. So the only thing that I've actually found that works is using PowerShell. And particularly it's important in the, uh, the final um, compression stage. So, so when you're putting the zip back together. For whatever reason, 7-zip throws an error, but if you use PowerShell to compress it, it's good to go. And I learned of this through I am Mancat. Uh, he had a great blog article about uh, digging into a .ms app file to go from um, change from a tablet to a mobile app. So huge shout outs to I am Mancat. We'll put his link to that article in the description below. Quick disclaimer, as you can tell by the couple things I just said, this is not a supported Microsoft uh, thing going into the .ms app file. So consider it as an experimental type thing. Um, so having said that, you know, it's possible it will break down the road, whatever it is that you're doing. So you'll just need to kind of be aware of that and be ready to put some time into redoing some of these tools if that file structure changes down the road. All right, let's go ahead and jump into our demo. So first we'll come to the home page and create an app from blank. And we'll call it our MS app demo. Let that load up. And the first thing that we will do is save the file online to Power Apps. So we have a record of it there. So now that this is saved, I actually realized I, I wanted to do one thing before we download the file. Uh, I'm going to throw a button on the page just to make a point later on. So we'll call this original button. Okay, save that again. And then to actually get the file as a .ms app file on our desktop, we'll go to save as this computer and it will automatically download. So now that this is downloaded on my Mac, let's come over to the virtual machine and uh, my downloads folder is synced with my Mac. And we see here we've got our MS app demo dot MS app and also two PowerShell scripts. So I'll show you how these work. Uh, so I'm gonna run the first script, which is basically going to extract this file, put it in a folder and then delete that file. So we'll run that and it'll give the folder the same name as the file. There we go. And now we can pop into it, see a lot of those things we saw earlier. And I'm going to head to the themes.json file. This is a huge file, so you want to format it. And in Visual Studio Code, it is um, Option Shift F, or on Windows, Alt Shift F. And that displays it nicely. And so I'm going to change uh, primary color one, which is hard coded to this RGBA value. I'm actually going to change it to a variable. So we're going to call it var my color and save. So what this is going to do is anytime anything is created, any control is created in the app that references primary color one, that hard coded value. Now it's going to reference this variable, which is kind of the magic of it all. So we'll close that. Come back to the downloads directory and we're going to run the second PowerShell script, which is going to bundle this up into back into a .ms app file. It's going to put it in a folder called, I think, new app, um, which you'll see why in a little bit. There we go. And there's our new MS app with the edited change. So now if I go back to the Mac, back to Chrome, I can open this up. So we'll go to open, browse, and there it is in the new MS app folder. All right, there's our original button with the hard-coded blue uh, value of primary color one. But you will notice if I add a new button, it throws an error with a black color. It does not know what color to get because if I go to the error, it's fill is var my color. Awesome. So in order to set that, we would actually need to set that variable somewhere. So I'll come to the app on start and set var my color to green. And then we run the on start 
and it's green. Pretty awesome. So that's the basic idea of how to edit um, things in that theme.json file as variables and have them show up here. The reason why this original one did not show up is because when a control is created, it actually goes into that .ms app file under the controls folder with all of the values at the time of creation. So that's just something to keep in mind that anything you're changing in there in terms of the theme document, theme.json document, it only affects future controls. So you wanna kind of do that before you start doing anything in the app. So one of the things that I want you to kind of be thinking about is when you're actually going through a process like this, you're probably gonna be downloading the app, changing a setting, re-uploading it, checking it in Power Apps, re-downloading it, changing it. Like this is a very cyclical thing. Um, so I just wanna show you one more cycle of this so you will really see how these PowerShell scripts will save some time. So let's go to, first we'll save it. Just kidding, we'll do save as. All right, re-download, back to the virtual machine, back here. You will notice I did not have to delete anything. I didn't have to rename anything. So we'll run script one again. All we have to do is run these two scripts. So it knows to delete old versions of the folders and replace them with new ones. So that's kind of the beauty of this is it makes iterating through very easy. Um, this time let's go into the folder and we'll check out uh, control. So we'll go to this one. We'll do our alt shift F. And so this is the screen, screen one. It's got all the controls within it, including our buttons. If we scroll down a little bit, there's button one. And button one, if we go to its fill, whoops, up here, fill. Here we go. So this is what the value is currently set to. So if you wanted to change what controls are actually set to within this file, this is where you do it. So I can change it to yellow. All right. So we'll go ahead and zip that back up. All we need to do is run script number two. That will replace the old file that's in the new MS app folder here. And we'll switch back to the Mac. Open it up. So you're just doing this process kind of over and over, but with these PowerShell scripts, it's very fast. And now we have a yellow button, easy as that. Okay, so now that I've showed you kind of the process, let me show you uh, in a little more detail these PowerShell scripts. I am not a PowerShell expert. Um, I'm fairly new to that uh, language, but um, so that's kind of why I want to walk through in case you're in that boat as well. Um, they are pretty basic and I included some nice comments and I'm going to make these available to you uh, in the description below as well so that you can use these. So the first one, um, pretty easy. So, so the main thing in terms of setting this up, both of these scripts um, in your downloads folder, you can have these two scripts and then this new MS app, which the second one creates automatically and then the original .ms app file or folder, but nothing else. And these scripts will work perfectly. And the reason why is because um, this first thing they're finding is the app name, which they're actually searching this directory for the extension .ms app and then taking the base name from it. And then they are seeing if the folder exists um, previously and it needs to delete it, and if so, it deletes it. Then it turns the .ms app into a .zip and extracts it, and then it removes the .zip, so we're just left with the folder. And then with this second one, this time we get the app name, uh, we'd look at all the folders within this current directory, and we eliminate new MS app, so we're taking the folder here. Uh, we're checking to see if this new MS app folder exists, and if not, we're creating it. And then we are seeing, is there something within the new MS app folder? Is there a file in there? And if so, delete it. And then we are compressing it into a zip and renaming it .ms app. So the great thing about these two scripts is you've seen, you just run the one, you run the second, you never have to rename anything, you never have to delete anything. It makes the workflow very fast. Finally, I'd like to talk about, now that you've kind of seen what's in an MS app file, how you can modify things in this process, 
I want to give you some kind of tips and tools and ideas to get your wheels spinning as far as how this can save you incredible time. Uh, first of all, if you have not seen my video about the theme template, uh, check that out. It's in the description below. So this is an amazing way to save you time. So if you go into that theme.json file, you can turn any of those properties into variables, set them at the beginning of your app, and then everything that you create from that point on is set to those variables. So you can set them to your company colors, company fonts, um, styles, all kinds of things, and it'll affect everything within that app. So that if you create something like that, it's a great starting point for all future apps that you use. Another great application of this is to do code reviews. So one of the things that is very difficult about Power Apps is it's really hard to see all of the code that you've written in one place. Like you see it when you click in certain controls and you click on certain properties, but just to see everything in one place, very difficult. So with this, now you can do that. You can see uh, everything that you've written in one spot. You can search for things. If you're like, where have I used this variable? and you just want to see all the places in one search, you can search here in Visual Studio Code. If you need to replace something, you're like, I don't like the name of this variable, I want to call it this. One time you can search and replace, changes all of them. Same thing for a collection. Um, if you realize you've used an expression, you like you want to change the way you use a certain expression, you can search for that and change all those. So very powerful way to find things, replace things. If someone else wants to look over your code, Easy way to do that. Um, there's this great tool, uh, actually a suite of tools, if you haven't heard of them, called the Power Apps Tools on GitHub. And they include four or five different tools that um, really basically dig into this MS app file and help with a lot of these things. And one of their tools is called the Power Apps Review Tool. And it's I haven't personally used it, but it looks super cool, and I'm going to be checking it out soon. But um, you actually, how they've done it is you'll see only the code that you've written. So only the properties that you've changed for the controls, which was really cool to help weed out kind of a lot of the extraneous text in these files. So definitely check that out, link below. Um, another thing that you can do, and I got this from an article by uh, Ludwig Perikon, I believe is how you say his name. Um, if you are in a scenario where you, let's say you've got a SharePoint site where you're keeping your data for lists. And you've got a developer list and a production list. And you have two versions of your app, a dev app and a production app. It takes time and is a little bit tedious to export the dev, um, import it into production, and then you've got to go into the app and actually change all of the data references within the app. So with something like this, you could do all of that right within the MS app file. And he even built and proposes a tool that will do all that automatically. So huge time saver when it comes to changing environments. Uh, another idea, which I mentioned this earlier from I am Mancat, is you can very easily change from tablet to mobile and back and forth. Those are just settings within the MS app, uh, I believe in that properties.json file. So easy to do, we'll link his article below. Um, you can also, this one's kind of cool, you can copy and paste entire pages, right? So if you come into the MS app file into that controls folder and you're like, boy, I really like a uh, screen, my home screen. I like the navigation. I like da, 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 da. I really want to use that in my next app. You can copy all that code and open up your new app, the MS app file, put it in there, boot up the app and there it is ready to go. So you can almost componentize screens, which is super cool. And the last idea, which is a pretty ambitious but very in intriguing idea, is if you really wanted to do this, you could build a generator of sorts that operates similarly to how Power App Studio does when you create a new app from data and it shows you like a screen with an edit form and a gallery and a view form. Um, but you could do that, like let's say you had a SharePoint site with 10 lists that were all relational and connected you could build a generator that for each of those lists built two screens in the app, one with a gallery and a view form, and then another page with an edit and new form. And then you had navigation that was automatically populated along the side with you know, links to each of them. Um, all of that's possible because that code would just be generated here in the MS app file. So just some ideas for you.
So in this video, we talked about uh, what is an MS app file? How do you edit it? Um, I showed you a demo of how to actually, that kind of cycle, that workflow of how you do it over and over and what sorts of things you can do. Uh, we talked about the PowerShell scripts and then finally some ideas to kind of get your brains turning, the wheels turning. Um, we're gonna share a bunch of resources in the description below. Uh, first, a video to the theme template, if you haven't seen that yet. Uh, I'll share the two PowerShell scripts. I'll share a document with all the workflow steps so that you can follow that for those iterations. And then I will also link all of the articles that I mentioned in the ideas. Particular shout outs again to I am Mancat for uh, his article on going from tablet to mobile and also kind of revealing this uh, compression process through PowerShell. So very much thanks for him. If any of this stuff seems like things that you need help with, um, we are we would be super happy to help. Um, please reach out, whether it's implementing any of this stuff or anything else Power Apps related or really anything Microsoft Modern Workplace related. We're here to help. Uh, that's it for this video and we'll see you next time.